Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Relations between the U.S. and Iran reached a historic level after a deal was signed on Sunday. The deal calls for Iran to halt most of its uranium enrichment efforts, eliminate its stockpiles of uranium, open its facilities to daily monitoring by international inspectors, and significantly slow the construction of the Iraq reactor. Now joining us to unpack all of this is Robert Kelly. He's a nuclear engineer who has worked in the U.S. nuclear complex for more than 30 years. He assisted the IAEA as the director in the Iraq Action Team. Thanks for joining us, Robert. Good evening. So, Robert, let's just break down some of the major components of the deal we have here from the White House saying that Iran agreed to halt enrichment above 5 percent. Can you explain to us why that's significant? Sure. And I'm glad you made the point you just did. We're working from the White House press release, so it might not be that everything is correct. But zooming the White House press release is mostly correct. What we see is they've agreed to stop going above 5 percent. You have to remember that Iran has an enrichment program um, that they don't necessarily even need at all. But they've invested an awful lot of national pride and money in these centrifuges. And it might have even been a weapons program at one time, although it doesn't look like it. 5% uh, enrichment now is a level consistent with peaceful, power-producing nuclear reactors and nothing more. And so if they hold it down to that level, they're at least showing good intent to not go above 11, a level that's only associated with peaceful purposes. Uh, 5% or 3.5% is typical for power reactors, 20% for research reactors, and 80 or 90% for a bomb. So this is way below the level needed for a bomb. Okay, let's continue on this list of what's in the deal. There's also, um, they agreed to neutralize their stockpile of near 20% uranium. So does that mean Iran is halting its uranium enrichment program completely? Well, no, not at all. They've produced a lot of 20% material. It's, technically, it's 19.9% enriched. And the reason for that is for a research reactor that they bought tens of years ago from the United States and the U.S. will no longer supply fuel for it. So they have, again, come from a national pride point of view, said, we're going to make fuel for that reactor. And that does worry people because it's getting very close to the level that one would need for a bomb. I know 20% doesn't sound like 90%, but technically it's getting very close. So, no, they're not giving up on the research reactor, but what they're saying is, or enrichment, they're, they're saying we're going to take the 20% material and put it in a form where it's not ready for further enrichment and it can be made into fuel. That's reversible, but it's a step uh, in the right direction. It's a step that shows good faith. What do you make of the daily access that's going to be given to the IAEA? Do you see this as um, excessive? Is this unprecedented also? Yeah, that's one of the really strange things in this press release, saying that the IAEA will have access every day. The IAEA has access right now to the fuel, um, uh, to the enrichment plants on about a weekly basis. And that's enough. The deputy director general of the IAEA said he can detect within two weeks uh, if there were facilities. So going every uh, is just excessive. If you think about it, directors uh, for safety and security reasons, that means that two plants, two people every day is 1,460 inspector days per year. They don't need those days. And so it, it's one of those places where you wonder some of the details of this agreement haven't been quite ironed out. I would be very surprised if the IAEA asked for that much access. And I think they'd probably be very unhappy about the cost of it. So. All right. Let's look at another point in the deal. Iran also agreed to halt their activities at um, Iraq and any progress on its, this, by the way, is coming from the White House, saying the plutonium track. Um, can you explain it, why that's significant? Well, two things. I think when you mentioned the plutonium track, what we're looking at there is that Iran would never have agreed to that language in any kind of consensus statement. So that's an indication that this is a White House release because Iran is adamant in saying, we don't have a plutonium program. This reactor is not to make plutonium. So when the White House says the plutonium track, they're showing a very, very strong US bias. Now, Israel has been really outspoken for the last uh, few weeks 
even a few months about the Iraq reactor being a source of plutonium for bombs. This agreement, as, as it's been handed out by the White House, completely stops that Iraq program. It stops the fuel for the reactor and, and everything else associated with it. All right, Robert Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And we'll continue our conversation with Robert Kelly in part two of our interview. So please be sure to check that out as well. Thanks for watching The Real News Network.